Hi guys, it's Stuart here from Azure World and thanks for joining me yet again on another tutorial. Whistler Scanners, boy oh boy. Um, there's quite a lot to go through here, but um, it's all I'm going to try to make it simple, straightforward and so that you understand um, what it's all about. Okay, so what are we going to cover in this tutorial? This is about the menus. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, some of the menus and uh, try to explain what um, some of the features do. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to go through the uh, what I think are the most important features for you guys. Okay, um, it's um, so that um, if anybody thinking of getting one of these radios to um, uh, take any myths away that um, they're really difficult to um, uh, program to understand well they're not they're really simple and straightforward and this video will show you exactly that or at least we hope so okay so without further ado um, first thing um, I need to tell you is that we've um, this is probably all about the 10th different uh, tutorials to do with Whistler scanners so this is further down the line if it's um, a bit too far along for you guys I'd start totally from scratch from the very beginning even from where even to get the software from so if this is um, too far advanced at the moment please look at my other tutorials on the Whistler scanners and you can find those I've made it even easier these days you can find it by if you just click on this little link up here where I'm pointed to now where it says Azure World click on that and that will take you straight to um, all of the tutorials for the Whistler scanners so go through those at your leisure and um, take your time through them and if you do you'll get a full understanding of everything with these radios all the um, tutorials that I've that I do are all my own thoughts okay it's what I think about them um, there may be other ways of doing things and I'm sure there is this is just the way I set things out and but it works for me so if it works for me it should work for you okay um, also uh, if uh, it'd be great um, to have you guys um, subscribe to Azure World and to do that all you have to do is just click on this little uh, icon over here saying follow me if you click on that it will take you to the um, Azure World page and from there you can subscribe to to us um, I have lots of different videos on there at the moment about 500 not just tutorials obviously but um, aircraft uh, videos and most days I do a live um, stream as well so if you're into anything to do with um, radios or aircraft or anything like that if that's your thing yeah please subscribe it'd be great to have you on board and um, obviously it's free of course and um, but if you select the option that says get notifications you will get an email every time I put a new video out okay so certainly do that give us a thumbs up it's always much appreciated um, I'd like to say thanks to um, Moonraker for helping to sponsor with these um, tutorials we're doing at the moment they um, have, they are loaning me some of the equipment so if um, I recommend checking their site out Moonraker their suppliers of radio and communication devices plus aerials and um, everything else that goes with that and you can get to them by clicking on this link here okay guys so menus that's where we're at at the moment um, step one okay this is step one and um, what I suggest um, you always do and I've um, said this in through most of my tutorials first thing if you are going to connect your scanner your Whistler scanner um, be it um, a handheld scanner or a base station uh, always first port of call if you're going to connect it to a computer switch it off okay if it's a base station one yeah and um, obviously keep the power in right but switch it off okay then plug your USB cable into the um, computer plug it in to the radio and if you're going to use the easy scan software which I'm not going to use at all in this tutorial if you want to know about easy scan software I told you earlier where um, you can find all of those tutorials okay 
Um, but for it to talk to the easy scan software, the radio has to be um, switched off but connected to the laptop. Um, if you want to use the scanner remotely, which is what we're going to use do today by using the remote scanner demo software uh, I believe that's um, the correct thing they call it here it is scanner control and um, once you have connected the cable then switch the power on the radio and that's exactly what I have done right now so that we can do this uh, demonstration for you guys okay so we're on the main menu section at the moment radio is powered on we're all connected and we are up and running uh, I'm not going to tell you how to go through all and how to set it all up and all the com ports and all of that because I've already done that in my tutorials so um, you know where to go to find that one as well okay so menus this is what we're looking at this um, is pretty much applicable for the uh, base station um, version so, such as the TRX or two and also um, because I'm using today the um, 1088 it's the same for the pretty much for the TRX one and the 1080 the only difference if you had a 1080 you would not have the um, little keypad just here but um, I've also done a tutorial that shows the difference between uh, the handheld and the uh, base radios which um, we're not obviously not going to cover today right so menus that's exactly what we're going to do for you so let's have a look what we are doing this is the um, first screen you would see when you power on your scanner okay sorry about that just hit the microphone right so let's have a look so if you had everything all programmed up on your radio and I assume at this point you, you probably have if you've been through the other tutorials um, here is the keypad yeah which pretty much relates to what we're going to use here I'm not going to do like some people do with um, their tutorials where you have a, a camera which is wobbling all over the place right I, I don't need to do that because I'm just going to do it via sh showing you um, these what it looks like okay I can do it all here remotely okay so that's what the radio looks like okay and here is the remote device we're going to use and here's the key pads that's what it looks like so okay if we wanted it to scan straight away we're going to just hit that and at the moment on my particular radio I have got these selected in my scan list there we go picking something up there that sounds like something I might want to there you go, I'm gonna lock that out stop making a, a noise um, I'll explain about skip and scanning and locking out and things like that as we go through okay right so let's go back to the menu okay that button there okay and that's where it is on the actual radio okay all right, I'm going to slow the voice down a little bit now so that um, I don't go too fast for anybody that's watching this for the first time. Okay, so what are we are going to do? We're going to look at scan lists first, okay? So I've gone down by doing that button there, okay? Then I'm going to hit that is on there yeah and by hitting this button okay so this is what we have in our scan list and I have these selected at the moment now say for example I wanted number one not to scan I would hit the select button you notice it takes the tick out if I go down and I didn't want that one I'd take that one out but if I wanted say for example East Mids Digital because they're all the digital frequencies that I have programmed into here I'd go select okay now if for example you had nothing selected in here at all and you went to your menu 
and you hit that which gets it to scan because that's what it's highlighted on at the moment watch nothing to scan okay now I've had people um, uh, ask me why you know it's quite a common thing they haven't had anything to scan and that's simple because either with an easy scan you haven't selected the actual scan list or if we go further down here right you haven't had the scan set selected okay so that is your first port of call just check those okay let's go back out of scan set by hitting that back left key that one there okay so we're back to the main menu again okay so what you have to have you have to have at least one scan list selected so let's go back in here so let's have that one so there we go I've got that selected okay now within easy scan I'm not going to talk too much about it I'm going to refer to it every now and again but that is your program for creating your um, settings for getting your frequencies and please go through the tutorials and I will show you all the shortcuts all the easy ways to get your frequencies into your radio by using easy scan okay but this is how I programmed mine up okay now you notice on each scan list I have before the actual name of my scan list I have put 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04, 0, 05 okay my reason for that it's all personal preference you set them up how you like this is how they're named in the first instance scan list 007 yeah um the reason that I do this will be come obvious in a couple of moments okay so let's just have that one selected because I said you have to have at least one selected okay let's go back to menu so remember East Mids is one Swanick is two um, that's um, East Mids digital is four and five is DHL and if we go down one more let's have a look and um, DHL trunk is six okay so let's go back up just try to remember those numbers okay let's go back now when we press that select there that's like an it's saying it's like an okay button okay there we go so now because we have selected in the scan list at least one and we have only selected one it's scanning through the frequencies of East Mids. Okay. Now, my reason for giving them the numbers. Okay, if I go to, yeah, notice in just a moment, it will. There we go. It'll start scanning um, that one. Okay. That's it. Number three. There we go. You'll see number three starting and number four now you notice that I'm going slowly and pausing through each one okay you're probably thinking oh that's a bit slow there's a reason and I'll show you why in just a couple of moments okay that's number five that will appear in a second and number six okay there we go and you notice on your radio right the more you have actually running it will then start scrolling through them you notice it's scrolling through yeah because it's filled the screen okay it's going through and through and through okay so you can see which ones are running okay so that's scanning all of those right now so it's like um, having quick keys yeah I'll talk about 
about quick keys quite a lot with the Uniden scanners. If you're into Uniden scanners, yes, uh, I have got tutorials for those as well. So please um, uh, follow Airshow World. Right, my reasons for putting zero, two, three, four, and all the rest of it. Okay, what you could do, as I said, use it like a quick key. Um, let's have a look. So let's get that scan again. You get it to scan quickly by just going like that. Um, say, for example, you notice I went quite slowly through them. Okay, well, this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock out, right? Not lock out, I'm going to stop scanning within the scan list um, all of them apart from D DHL trunk, which is number six, as you can see. Okay, so to do this quickly, what you do, right? You can go right let's do this one and then follow that immediately by the dot two dot three dot four dot five dot okay so that then in a couple of moments there you go see it's um stopped all of those scanning so you can select if i went six um, right, you'd then have to go back into the menu and select that scan list because it won't then scan. Um, there we go. Let's yeah, nothing to scan. Okay, so then you'd have to go back in here. Right, so always have one selected for obvious reasons. Okay, let's go back up. Right, select that by hitting that. Yeah, okay. Let's go back hit that okay all right so the reason for hitting that little dot in between these is pretty obvious if you think about it because if you've got lots of different scan lists and you've got double digit ones right if you went oh one two three right if you went one two it would start scanning um, scan list number 12 yeah or for example if you just went um, uh, I don't know then went um, two and three I want those well no it would start scanning um, scan list number 23 if it was enabled and you had anything in there okay uh, I'm not going to talk about enabling um, the scan lists because that's all covered in the um, tutorial with the easy scan software okay so but that's the point of hitting the dot okay so but I mean if you have a pause of it like uh, I believe it's three seconds yeah, enough time for that to start scanning. Well, you, you you could you know you don't have to hit the dot then. You just go like I just did then. Okay, let's have number two because I've left quite a bit of a pause. Number two, and once that appears, yeah, there we go. You see, and number three. Okay, so in other words, um, I've got East Mids frequencies in there. I've got the Swanic frequencies in there. It all depends what you want to run. Okay, but if you if you want them locking out or enabling nice and quickly, don't forget the little dot. Okay, I think I've covered that quite over the top. I think anybody could understand that easily. Okay, all right. So the radio on these next ones, I will just have the DHL one running go out it'll keep um stopping on those frequencies and um slow down the tutorial so we're going to lock out one two three one two and three here we go let's do this one dot two dot three and there we go you'll notice the only one running now any second will be there you go i didn't hit number one quite accurately enough there we go that should do it there we go yep JD so that's the whole point of naming it in the first instance like zero six okay so it's important I will explain this little bit for you let's go back into the scan list because you may not have um, you notice obvi obviously that one you must make that one zero one zero two zero three zero four yeah you uh and I think you can understand wh where where I'm coming from obviously if you had that one chord zero four right it wouldn't make sense because 
um, if you had say I don't know um, for example oh Coningsby right so if you had all your Coningsby frequencies in there and you had that prefix with something say in 0 7 right um, and if you hit the keypad 7 well it wouldn't scan that at all it would scan that one so that's why it's important just make sure you do it um, in this order okay all right guys fair enough let's go back to the menu right because that's what we are dealing with today so that's your scan lists um, let's go further down browse objects you don't need to go into browse library and um, because that's really not applicable for the United Kingdom um, and also when you're doing updates via easy scan software um, also I wouldn't unless you're going to the U United States of America I would not use the browse library I'm not going to go into full details um, we've already covered that on um, the previous tutorials okay so let's go to browse objects see what that brings up now in the browse objects it comes up there browser so if you want to get to the um, scan what's in those scan lists yes where all those frequencies are let's have a look which one should we go into so notice see the number changes three four yeah five six okay so DHL truck so say for example we wanted to have um, the radio permanently on uh, let's see we'll go for East Midlands um, tower okay let's go back just accidentally knock that and uh, by the way the buttons I'm using are these the little um, four-way keypad thing here yeah and obviously that's your enter menu there okay and numbered keypads and that's where they're all situated on here okay so let's find East Mids and um, by the way yeah to get to the different scan list it's these to get to the frequencies within the scan list it's this one so there we go that's how we got to East Mids we're still within that scan list because we went up and down via these but to get to the different to get to the frequencies those to get to the uh, different scan lists those when you're in the browser view okay so we want to listen to East Mids Tower if you wa only wanted to listen to that frequency hit that and there you go okay so that is listening to that I've got the squelch on so if anything breaks through the squelch you'll hear it okay it's quite useful this um, if you were going to listen to um, uh, some digital um, trunk channels because all of the frequencies would be in that trunked channel um, trunk channels uh, of course I have a tutorial that explains all about um, trunk channels and uh, trunked systems should I say and you can find that by clicking here and you will see the um, playlists for them okay so let's browse across let's go to um, scan list number six so this is the DHL trunk um, let's have a look what we have in here okay so we'll have a look at this one okay so I'm going to select that yeah okay so what that is doing at the moment I'm not expecting it to pick anything up at the moment because that is mainly active at night but um, basically it's a whole load of um, frequencies that are in one container and they use one normally one control channel and via that control channel it'll feed off to lots of different frequencies okay but they also use um, talk group IDs so for example um, when you're first setting one of these up and you're out with your radio and it picked up a um, frequency because I've set it to a wild card yeah and you can see that going talk group wild card flashing away just there yeah um, 
you can this radio is clever enough to find the wild cards so you set a wild card within the trunk when you first set up your trunk tracking okay if, if I'm talking utter nonsense and you don't know what it is the tutorial of trunk tracking explains it okay how to set the wild card but what I'm going to show you within the menu is if it lands on that frequency and you want that wild card saved yeah, because this radio finds them for you. Providing you've got wildcard, it will find the talk groups for you. Providing you've got wildcard. Okay, so if it finds something, so it lands on, it starts talking. If you went on your radio and hit menu, right, you would then have an option. Instead of it saying cancel changes, right, it would have something there saying save talk group um, ID or wildcard. Okay. Excuse me, I can't. You know, if it was saving it, if it was doing it now, I'll tell you. Oh, but anyway, it's the first option at the top because it's not transmitting at the moment because it's not picking it up. That's why it says cancel. But by hitting that menu uh, when it was picking something up, if you hadn't already, um, if it was a new talk group, you'd have the option then to go, oh, yes, please save it. And you'll do that by hitting that button there okay so just remember that that's a handy feature to have and um, you can have the radio ID as well okay um, let's scroll down see what else we've got um, you could set the scan list where it's going to be saved okay so I'm not going to go any further explaining about that but that's just something handy if you um it's in other words it's a, it's such a clever radio that it will find these um it will find the color code automatically find color code it will find the uh, talk group id it will find the radio ids for you okay and that's how you can have them if but that but that's by putting a wild card into it okay all right and you're asking why is he not telling us how to do a wild card well I'm not going to my saying of um, reinventing the wheel it is explained in the other tutorials okay let's um, go through a couple of other things so that's the objects I think we've covered that um, program menu let's go in there again hit select okay so here we've got um, global settings edit systems so that's to edit a um, trunk system um, for example one you've already got you can add um, a new system and also you can add conventional frequencies so if you are out and about and you um, wanted to and you thought ah oh, heck I've not got this frequency um, into my um, scanner you'd go down to this one here called add uh, conventional frequency okay I'll briefly show you that shortly but let's start off here global okay global settings okay global settings here we go let's see what we've got which we can either go that way or you can just go down um, let's go down okay so cancel changes save settings default values there's a lot of these I'm not even going to touch priority mode no I'm not going to touch not going to touch enable record yep um, you've if you've been through the tutorials you will know that I always whenever I put frequencies into easy scan software I always select record on everything that I do I have everything recorded on my base station on my base scanner I have a 16 gig card actually on that one so it can record for months if it wants to um, so without filling filling it up at all the four gig cards I think they hold something like about a um, hundred hours of um, recordings um, don't quote me on that um, so make sure that's um, selected if you want to go down 
um, the way I do things um, of course these are all my own thoughts I'm not saying they're the right way it's just how I set things up search record that's a handy one to have selected and uh, you probably all you do to make sure that it's selected is you hit that key once you've got it enabled and um, selected there hit that so in other words this okay now if I did that that would take it out okay and then just go like that okay when you first go through these it's prob possibly it will not be selected so just make sure that search record is actually selected I will explain the reasons for that just a little bit further on when we go into another menu and we um, I show you how to do um, searches okay uh, I'm not going to talk about those um, let's go through a few more scan set options and um, sound stealth this is a hand well for me it is anyway um, if I had that when you first get the radio right and you plug it in you hear it go beep bleep beep beep and making these noises which literally drive me crazy if I was doing this tutorial with that switched on um, I will guarantee you'd have switched off before but before now because the noise would be driving you crazy all right so if you don't want the sound of uh, every time you hit a, a key on your radio or every time you scroll down or whenever you do something right if you don't want that making that ridiculous that <laughs> sorry you know what you can tell I don't like it okay switch it up put it to stealth and you do that by again this little four-way thing here which is on the remote software that we are using that let's take that off because I do not want it on okay alerts no key beeps I do not want that no uh, but if you had those selected um, to sound being on you could choose the key beep you could have it quiet yeah up, up to you how, how you set it up I mean you can do all this a lot faster by using the easy scan software but if you're out in the field and you'd reset your radio or whatever and you wanted to switch it off or switch it off that's how you do it in these settings okay alert volume that you can set an alert sound uh, let's have a look battery this is because I'm using the 1088 scanner on this one that's why it's mentioned in batteries you would not have that if it was the um, the base station version um, light area okay so I've got my radio selected for both areas what that means is that area will light up there and so will the keypad okay here if you wanted to set the time that the uh, backlight stays on for yes you would go across yeah, which is what we're going to do by doing that and in there you can set your time um, default is probably only about five seconds I've got mine set to 50 and um, it's up to totally up to you guys how you set that just remember if you have it set too long it will use more battery power if you're using the handheld okay that's the light on time let's go down light level is set to low at the moment and um, you could change that okay obviously by doing those going across I'm not going to go through that that's self-explanatory um, let's have a look show radio ID so when it's scanning and um, if it picks up a digital um, signal and you want it to show the radio ID you put a tick in there tag only use radio alert no um, when I'm out and about, I like to be able to see the the control channel frequency. Okay, so if I was out and about and I wanted to look for um, trunk um, tracking um, systems, yeah, the important thing that you are looking for is the control channel. Okay, now the control channel. I'm not going to go into too much depth here I've already done it in the other tutorial but the control channel is the first that is the main channel that everything goes through okay and then from that 
you have the voice channel so you if you set your radio especially with Abco P25 um, systems which is the ones that I'm most familiar with at certain um, airfields around the country that I can't mention but uh, for those particular ones this radio to find them is it's fantastic I'm I've really got to tell you this radio is brilliant All right, because you, you can do a search which I'll show you in, in a moment um, when we get to that section um, but the radio can search and if you're close enough to the actual transmitter right, it will find that control channel and literally all you'd have to do for setting up your trunk tracking is you just have to put in that control channel and the radio is clever enough to find everything else okay it'll just go through and do it that's on Apco P25 okay it just finds them all for you all right um, I was amazed absolutely amazed how clever this particular radio was to be able to um, d do that um, even uh, I had a friend with me they had the uh, Uniden scanner and this was absolutely miles better so much better I hope very soon to be able to do a tutorial that um, compares the very latest Uniden uh, uh, digital scanner with the Whistler so you know keep keep tuned to this because I'm very interested to see if the very latest um, is as good as this the um, the older Uniden scanners are not a patch on this that's only my thought but that's on my experience from what I've seen okay less than that waffle so basically yep yeah, that's what I love about it. and that's why I have that ticked just there there's another way to be able to uh, find out the control channel right but you would need um, your uh, scanner connected to the computer and to get the recordings back in th which I'll explain I'm jumping ahead of myself but I'll explain that shortly okay if you're interested in what the talk group IDs are you'd put a tick in there go it across click that right sh click that select and that would uh, highlight that okay let's go down here's another one I like to see um, my personal preference show site name what that means if on the radio right example someone's um, uh, got a radio and they're transmitting if they have the particular name on that um, radio say for example I don't know um, ground frequency yeah or um, Fred's ground radio yeah and um, if they had that information on their radio your radio here it would be picked up in this section here okay because basically you're choosing here what information this is displaying okay so what you click in here is the display information that you are going to see Right. you can have this all set via the easy scan software but you might want to change this this is why I'm showing you you may want to change this while you're out in the field okay so example you may want to just go oh yeah I want to know the talk group IDs okay all right um, let's go down conventional radio ID we're not going to cover that um, low battery yeah that's pretty obvious you would not have that if it was a base that so that's really the only differences between the radios I'm not going to touch any of these um, charge to no band plan um, let's go up just for a moment you could just double check through your menus that you have got the band plan set correctly okay move that across like that go All right make sure that you've got UK if you're in the UK obviously Flexi step. Not going to explain. I've already explained about flexi step before. Um, encode tone. Encode tone. All right. 
if you were picking up a frequency um, I've noticed I've not noticed this with um, the DMR but certainly with the APCO P25 if um, the actual or let me think if yeah the voice is encrypted yeah you will hear a beep um, a tone of whatever you've selected in here and this is where you would select your different tones okay and of course the different sound for it the volume noise yeah so you'd hear something going beep 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 and you would know that that is encrypted okay I've only noticed it for APCO P25 um, let's go down here I F out let's give that a bit of thought for a moment what that is on your radio on the handheld scanners around about here where I'm in between the uh, antenna and the actual dial here right just in the middle there there's the headphone socket okay well at the moment you just put your headphones in and uh, it work normal you'd hear the normal sound coming out yeah say for example you wanted to turn your radio into um, uh, giving you the raw data output yeah um, what you could do is by moving across here and selecting that yeah you if that was selected and you put a cable from there 3.5 jack into the input of a computer and used a piece of software uh, lots of different pieces of software out there I normally recommend DSD plus and that would encode sorry that would decode the digital output okay what's the point in doing that when the radio actually does it okay well some people like to see more information that's actually been decoded but here's um, a thought for you guys okay the latest Whistler scanners um, i.e. the TRX1 and the TRX2 both of those have recently been upgraded via the firmware to be able to use NXDN okay alright that's another uh, digital f uh, radio format yeah um, these earlier models um, such as the um, 10 I say earlier they've not been out long the 1080 and the 1088 and also the base station version of uh, the predecessor of the TRX2 they will not upgrade to NXDN but they are about a hundred pounds cheaper so have a think about it and I've mentioned this before on my other tutorial that, that compares the different radios so I'm not going to go into too much depth but if you um, think yourself well I'm not too bothered about NXDN now not not a problem you know you can save yourself about a hundred pounds because th they're a, l a lot cheaper okay but if you've got a computer handy what you could do is you could send the output via this setting here to your computer and then using our uh, DSD plus it would uh, or at least it should decode NXDN okay now I unfortunately in the area that I uh, at the moment I have no I have never ever picked up any anything with NXDN I think it's uh, probably something for the future maybe the cities have them London Birmingham where, where uh, Manchester wherever but so far in my locations I have not picked up any NXDN but if you've got one of these um, radios that cannot be upgraded um, for NXDN that's your option.
that you could uh, actually um, try. Bit of a pain because I like to use my radio with, without the um, computer most of the time. Okay, I had a guy the other day ask me the question. He said, Stu, he said, um, these um, Whistler radios, they always, um, is it right they always have to be connected to a computer? Absolutely not. No. They do not need to be connected to the computer. The only thing that the computer um, um, is doing for you is making life easier. To be able to send your frequencies and your settings across to your radio um, quickly. Okay. Hence the program is called Easy Scan. And um, if you want to know how to do all of that. I've got a tutorial on there. I think it's the very first one that shows you within literally... Um, well, you could, in theory, within um, one minute of having your radio um, getting it up and running with all the frequencies in, say for whatever, whatever you want, you can have it up and running within just a couple of minutes if you follow my um, tutorial. Okay, so that's the whole point of using a computer. It means you don't have to go tap, 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 tap all day. Um, programming up the scanner which would take for ages and I even point you to um, places where you can get all of these um, frequencies yeah so um, worth checking out all of those tutorials okay let's um, move along alright let's go through some more power auto power on I really like that feature um, it's something that I I somebody leave a comment let me know why auto power on is not um, on the base stations why is it only on the um, it, I don't even I can't mention the TRX one I haven't got one of those to demonstrate um, somebody please leave a comment let me know if the power on is on the TRX one is it something they've um, dropped um, if they have put it back in do a firmware upgrade and put it back in because it's certainly in the um, 1088 and the 1080 handheld scanners what it does the auto power on you can see if the, um, you put the tick in here by going across selecting selecting select you can um, put a time when the radio will automatically power on so um, if you wanted the radio to auto switch on, say, in the middle of the night. Just a moment. Hello? Who is it, please? No, thank you. Okay, there you go. I do apologise for that. Um, I'm not going to stop the, the video. Normally I'd stop it and get, carry on, but uh, I'm sure you can imagine why that was. That was a pain in the backside um, telephone call that we get in this in the United Kingdom. We get them all the time. Anyway, sorry. Carry on, Stu. Don't get put off. Hope you're still with us, guys. Um, timer. Um, so, in other words, the radio, whatever time you set in here, the radio will... Um, start up at that particular time and auto start scanning there you go and by doing these keys here but you're laughing your socks off <laughs> at the moment <laughs> oh dear don't you just love it when the phone goes the most inconvenient times there you go and you can set your times if you do that obviously make sure that um, you've got that selected if I did that and switch the radio off right at 22 um, at 10 minutes to 11 it would auto power on and start scanning brilliant feature absolutely love it why is that not on the base station ones someone answer me that question okay mode here we go look so well you wouldn't want it to scan the um, the weather not in the United well you probably would today it's We've got um, a, a massive gale going through. Um, but you can say, OK, well, when it powers on at um, 10 to 11, I want it to scan. Or I want it to monitor a particular frequency. Or I want it to go to the menu. I can't understand why you'd have it go to the menu. I think what you'd do, you'd set it up the night before 
for writing you'd say okay yeah I want it to monitor something or I want it to um, just scan whatever you've left your radio um, sit scanning whatever scan lists you've actually put on okay brilliant feature oh, I can't tell you how frustrated I am that that is not set I think we've been through them pr pretty much now there we go so if you've made any changes and um, you click save changes don't worry if you hit menu when you escaped um, I'll just double check yeah we've been through everything so if you hit menu and, and you did make some changes it will come up and say do you want to save the changes well I don't want to save any changes but if you did and you wanted to save them you would click that button there which is that one okay so I'm, I'm just still grinning to myself about the phone <laughs> um, okay so no skip uh, let's go back to the main menu again okay so there's your main menu program menu in we go my goodness this is a long tutorial isn't it sorry guys um, edit system okay so what that is um, if you've already created some trunk tracking systems you can actually edit them by adding um, new frequencies to them um, or for example if the control channel changed um, you could um, change that all within the edit system should I show you yes we should okay let's find something I don't think I'm in the best system at the moment to be able to do this. Um, I th no. Um, yeah, okay. Yes, I think we could do it from here. Okay, select. Right. There's me clicking away like mad. What you need to do, you just need to give it a moment for it to load. Okay, there we go. I was too... Um, I was too quick doing that so I do apologize let's go back down to this edit system edit system let's hit hit that down okay select alright let's have a look see what we've got we, that's not the one I want move across DHL trunk yeah that's a proper one okay so then if you hit this think of it as like an enter key or an OK key right um, give it a second because it is what it's actually doing at the moment it's actually loading it okay so now we're in that particular system okay so we're in there so what you can do within this you can um, edit the site you can add a talk group okay the type DMR you could change the type if you wanted yes okay so this is all within that so let's go edit site okay let's go in there okay so we're going to select that site okay so as I was saying earlier if the frequencies you wanted to add extra frequencies you'd put them in here okay so there we go that's all the frequencies I have for this particular trunked channel and um, trunked system okay so that's how you get in there now there's a much easier way and that's by using the easy scan software okay but as I was explaining a moment ago if you're out in the field and you needed to change something that's how you can do it I'm just showing you the menus okay and obviously if you change something click on save changes I'll quickly go through see if there's anything else we want to alter um, no, I think that's fine. Okay, so hit menu. Um, 
yes you can add new let's go out of there and out again all right so that's to be able to edit something that you already have okay now what you if you were going to do this via the menus what we're going to do for you we're going to add system click on that and you could choose what type of system you want now I'm most familiar with the um, Apco P25s okay so we're going to s hit select okay so give it a moment um, you can't see it on the uh, demo on the screen here but what it's doing is just saying working please wait and basically what it's doing is creating um, an actual system for you okay via the Motorola P25 systems okay so just like it was before on the edit ones right you're going to edit site the easiest way like I said a moment ago is to use the software and I've explained how to do all of that via my other tutorials okay and here we go of course there's no frequencies there at the moment but if I was out and about and um, I was doing a search and it had picked up the voice control channel I would put that in there and um, on the Apco P25s it would auto ma automatically if I knew got the settings which we're going to show you right it will find a lot it is very very clever so by table normal let's go across here and what I do I select auto fill yeah and I found by doing that it automatically finds the frequencies everything else for you and populates it um, you when it does find a new frequency it's just like I when you've got that particular um, when you've got that, uh, so I'm just struggling for the word at the moment. Um, when you've got that particular trunk uh, system running and it finds it, um, like I mentioned earlier, you have the option to um, save the um, uh, the talk group IDs and everything else, and it will find these different frequencies um, by clicking the menu. All right, it will save it within here. It's brilliant okay do I want to save changes no I don't because I've got my radio set up as it is but um, that's how you can get that set up when you're in the field okay um, some people may disagree that's absolutely fine but I have found this is how it works for myself okay um, people have mentioned color codes and everything else um, I've got to be honest I've not um, sit I am um, set the color code because it finds it you know by that option by adding the um, let's go up by adding the wild cards okay um, add talk group let's go down let's go across see talk group wild card by adding that I hope this is all making sense okay so there you go it would add the wild cards for you oh, by adding the wild card okay so make sure you've got wild card added it's so much easier um, doing this um, via the software but for the sake of repeating myself um, sometimes you don't have the option because you are out and about and the whole point of this tutorial is to show you the actual um, is to show you all of the uh, menus hello yeah apologies again 
And apologies for the um, sound on. I ought to do these tutorials in the middle of the night. I probably wouldn't get any um, phone calls then. Okay, talk group ID. Yes, yes. Radio ID. Let's go down one. Select. Okay, so um, you can have the wild card for the radio ID. Okay, so you choose which you want. We go back. Okay, colors. Okay, so, oh yes, this one. Set scan list. So, if you added yourself a new there we go, you might want to put it into a new scan list. Okay, so if you add a new trunk system, you might want to put it in a, a, a different scan list. Um, it's entirely however you want it, or you might want to put it in one that you've already created. It's uh, just personal preference. Okay, we're going to move out of um, these sections. Okay, no, I don't want to save any changes that I've made. Okay, out of that. So that was a little bit long-winded and a bit annoying with the phone calls but um, I hope you're still with me okay add conventional frequency alright um, simple okay so all you do here is say for example you're out and about and uh, you went oh heck I forgot that particular frequency to put it in my radio you just go put it in via your keypad dot 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 along here yeah and then you would go say okay select okay to that right and it would want to know where do you want to save it to and then you would um, hit the um, that so put it in whichever scan list you want it to go in alpha tag that is where you would name it okay um, this is where, as I said, it's much easier using the software to, to do all of this because you can type away. Okay, um, let's go down, see if there's anything else in here. Oh yes, of course, the actual um, mode. Um, so if you knew it was a uh, d digital DMR, you'd put a little tick in there. Okay. And of course, all these other features again, the radio ID and everything else. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, skip because we're not saving any channels there, any settings there. So, look, that has really been quite intensive through that lot there. Okay. So, that was um, the program menu. Okay, let's go back to the main menu. Okay, so that was program menu. Let's go down. Okay, so next step we're going to look at um, searching. So this is searching section. Okay, all right, so you can get the radio to do an actual search for you so it can search through a whole uh, lot of different um, go right the way through the frequency range that the radio is capable of okay now this is a section that um, yeah you certainly do via the radio when you're mainly when you're out and about with your scanner so let's see let's go in there right now search Okay, so you can hit that to get you back to the main menu, which, um, right, up. Okay, so that's what that would do. Spectrum sweep. Okay, all right, what the heck is Spectrum Sweeper? Yeah, well, I can tell you, it is fantastic okay it's similar it works in a similar way to the um, where the uniden um, radios have their close call 
it's similar to that um, it has an unbelievable high speed search that um, looks for anything that's transmitting and if it's within a very close range it will find it okay um, you have um, different options that you can um, go through you can get it to search all bands so that will um, go through all of the bands okay but if you hit menu while it's going through the spectrum sweeper which is what I'm going to do right now watch hit it once and then you scroll down what you can do here is you can say okay I'd like it to I don't want it to search through that band I um, don't want it to search the um, air band which is that um, I'd like it to do that one because I've been looking for the digital ones okay so um, no I'm not bothered about that I think that's uh, mainly military aircraft not that one but yes I'd like you to scan through that and let's have a look um, yep up to that I don't want you to scan that or that or that okay so obviously if you made any changes you would select save okay so let's go back to the sweeper menu if you did make any changes at this point I think you'd probably get the option that says do you want to save okay so then back to your all bands and as you could see it's going through and it's that is going like greased lightning it's going through the 400s like you can't believe it. it's going so fast you can't even see them but it's certainly going through them because we've we've told it to I can prove the fact let's have a look menu we'll go this way get us there quicker okay let's take the tick out of that one hit that All right should be none others selected okay back to menu save changes yes I did make a change this time so yes change um I've gone too far back sorry search go in there spectrum sweeper in all bands up one all bands go and there we go okay so just notice how fast it's going through if anything was transmitting on there and you were close enough to that um, transmitter it would pick it up okay and that is how you're gonna find your um, control channel frequencies and if you had um, like I showed you in the menus the um, option to show the uh, control channel it would tell you that that's the control channel for your trunk tracking okay um, so it's a great way to be able to find um, all your digital frequencies okay or anything else that you're interested in but it's like close call okay so of course we're asking the question well that's okay but um, that's only close call I don't want to um, go through that I want to um, you know search um, for things that are a little bit further away well we've got that covered as well so what we we'll do we'll go back down to search okay and what you can do there's different searches here there's a service search okay so these are um, to be honest I don't tend to use it you could set these up how you like yeah there is options in here to be able to change these but most of these will be set up for um, the USA um, maybe I haven't got these in because I've not downloaded their yeah, oh wait, is yeah, uh, that's public safety. Well, but remember, these are set up for the for the US, right? I've just escaped once. So what you could do, you could then alter where it actually searches. Okay, so you can do all of that. Okay, service search. All right, um, let's go back down here. 
search there we go and let's go so I think you're okay with that service search limit search this is the one we're interested in okay let's go in here so you what it's going to do now it's going to um, search through via whatever setting you have on your squelch okay so if you've got your squelch set high it will um, um, block off the near um, the far off frequencies so if you want to, you, you choose whatever setting you want that um, via your squelch okay so again if you wanted to set a range you'd hit menu once notice it said limits you'd go down okay and here is where so say for example I wanted to search through by using the keypad a range of let's go by select that one there yeah well firstly we're going to put a zero right because um, we're not going up into the three um, up into the thousands up into the gigahertz we're going to let's have a search around say one from 150 150 megahertz okay and move that across okay so say okay select that and notice that's changed now okay let's go down to the high so this is the maximum that it's going to um, search through let's go in there um, we can move it across or hit a zero um, let's go for um, so 150 let's go for 200 200 let's move that across da -da -da -da. okay select okay and that's what it says and um, you'll have to um, obviously save it but I think if I hit menu that to take us out it'll come up with the option there's your save option okay and I'm gonna hit menu save changes and if I hit select select see it would save it okay down to our I'm going to show you a couple of shortcuts in just a moment um, how to get to these um, scans without going through all the ups and downs okay um, so select I do apologize that I wasn't thinking I was thinking of something else then wasn't tell you what I was thinking about um, okay yeah we're in the main menu down 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 search okay and now go down to your limit search and notice 150 to 200 and that's what it's searching that range okay I think that's simple as well hope you guys are still with me on this okay sorry it's a long tutorial but uh, um, if you go step by step you will get the idea of this radio and uh, I do want to go slowly through it because I want you to get the full idea of it okay and I'm sure you've had time for a couple of breaks every now and again especially with the phone calls okay so that's your limit search that's pretty well covered okay you can put an attenuator into it so that would um, if you're getting a lot of noise coming through if there was a station that was absolutely blasting through and it was wiping everything out out you could put the attenuator on okay you could put a delay time okay let's have a look at the delay all right I can't tell you offhand what the time is the delay of it so sorry about that um, okay save changes nope I'm not gonna save this time so where are we we're back to the main menu um, so we've done s told you about scanning the scan lists yes we've done that we've done the browse library that it in the United Kingdom it's pretty useless um, browse objects we've showed you that program menu we've been in there scan sets let's go into scan sets they're the ones I've got selected okay um, in for scan sets not scan lists don't get confused 
with scan lists and scan sets you need to look at my other tutorials for the um, to tell you all about scan sets and scan lists okay it becomes of it would confuse the hell out of you if I try to explain right now without using easy scan so I'm not even going to go there okay um scan sets all right to get out of there use that arrow key there to take it out okay and again right we're back to the main menu okay that's if you kept hitting menu 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 and it wasn't taking you out once you're in scan sets it's that to take it out okay so we're not going to go back to scan sets search we've just done that um so restore skipped so if you've skipped any uh, frequencies you could just hit that and it would restore them all back in okay by hitting that got it V scanner V scanner okay wow that is um, not going to go into too much detail because my other tutorials will tell you everything about it but this is in other words you see dat folders that I explained earlier and the tutorial and here they all are I've got loads I've got 18 yeah so if I wanted to open up another one say I wanted to open up um, shop and pub watch I'd select that okay and what that is doing on the radio right now that is loading a completely different configuration and a whole lot of different frequencies for a totally different topic so my whole reason for having different uh, v scanner folders is for different things that I'm interested in okay if I'm interested in my aircraft I would have that um, of the v scanner folder that we were working on and doing everything earlier okay just a moment ago this okay very quickly show you into the scan lists and it will show you what's in here okay so this is what we've got okay so not too much there okay but you could have so so I think you may be getting the idea now that this radio can have literally if you wanted millions of different frequencies um, I do suggest using the uh, V scanner folders so that when if you for example had everything absolutely everything piled in like you know thousands and thousands and thousands of frequencies in to just one v scanner folder right it would take quite a while to load up right so i find it for me easier just to quickly go okay right um i will have let's go down to our v scanner folders again all right i'll have all of my military stuff all right let's see remember we're getting to them by doing this yeah all that way whether you want to go up or down okay so I've got the complete military list there I've got France there so you understand how I'm doing this okay Lake and East Milton Hall okay here we go and up Birmingham if I went over there Derby City yeah so okay yeah let's go for Derby City select that and there we go it's loading up into the scanner and then I will just have um, Derby City running because if you were going around a different part of the country what's the point in having um, a s settings for a different part of um, the, the, the country of course you could have them all set in within scan lists and just operate your scan lists yeah so yeah it's just personal preference the but the reason that I do it this way is to make it nice and easy and quick for it all to um, load and to be up and running okay so V scanner folders that's basically what it's um, all about and um, um, if you want to know full details please look at my tutorial by clicking on the link up there and look for the one that um, I think it's the first one actually that um, is about uh, that 
so if I was at um, um, a certain area um, US Air Force base which it's loading up now it would then go to the scan lists so that's um, the digital for there let's go down select and there we go and okay that's what I've got selected in there okay so we're back to the main menu each time by clicking that let's go down and search yes b scanner folders score so that update from library um, no we don't want to do that set clock you could set the clock manually if you um, wish to do that um, I suggest the easiest and fastest way of setting the clock is to use easy scan software and there's an option in that which I've showed on my other tutorials that will send the time date and everything within a fraction of a second okay okay so that's the whole list um, the one that we've not covered yet and we will do finally is the one for the um, recordings and that's exactly where we are right now okay so we're in the recordings time stamps it okay um, in this section where you get your view here it's pretty limited for the information that it gives you yes it should give you the frequency that was recorded which it's got there if it was digital it will give you limited information if you want to find out a lot more information like for example um, it will not show you on here the uh, uh, control channel frequency and the um, I think it may show you the color code but the full in-depth information will not be there but you can view all of that information if you import um, if you use easy scan software and you um, there's an option in the easy scan software that will allow you to be able to play back all of your recordings okay um, again I'm not going to show that because we've already done that in our tu other tutorials okay and um, I've also shown how to use the actual playback functions but that's quickly in here um, you can go yeah up and down so that's that way so to play back the recordings there we go DHL trunk so if I wanted to play that I would hit that and that will start playing the actual um, um, recording okay let's, let's go so it's a bit longer okay and play and in the background um, it's actually playing that and there we go yeah so it comes up with a talk group ID which is number four okay but it's very limited so if you wanted the full information um, of your recordings you would then use as I said the software okay and um, if you hit menu once you're in here yeah um, just hit menu once um, you can say play from here so it would um, play all of your recordings from where you were okay you can delete all or delete earlier or delete um, later so in other words delete ones that were on here before you, the one you're on at the moment okay so you've got those options there okay there's your menu okay I think we have almost covered everything on here it's password mm, okay if you can set a password that's up to you with your radio in case it gets um, stolen but then if someone else had the um, software you'd have to do you just plug in the radio and you uh, into easy scan software and that then wipe that then resets it okay so the only way to if you forget your password um, it the only way to be able to access your radio would be to use easy scan software and clear in the password okay um, all right but remember we're not showing you easy scan software on this tutorial and there's way too much to go through okay I think we are almost there apart from 
one little other item that I'm going to show you. Um, what this is, this is like um, a quick way of getting the um, radio to start scanning or to be able to get to your search modes or to be able to get to the um, program frequencies. I go into f absolute full depth how to do this in um, my shortcut um, uh, tutorial but basically all it is the, you do have to have the latest firmware uh, upgrade on this and doing this don't be scared of doing firmware upgrades it's um, quite simple and of course yes you've guessed it yes I've got a tutorial to show you right so what um, this is all about is by hitting the FN key okay that's the key there on the device it's down here FN key what you do is you go hit that FN key and but if I do that for you now FN on the actual display of it doesn't show you on here but on the display of your radio the FN symbol will show okay and if you went number one that will automatically start scanning whatever scan list you have got selected okay if you went FN2 right so you need to go back to menu okay so let's see what FN2 does for you okay that takes you down to the program menu settings so instead of going scroll scroll using these yeah it takes you straight into program settings okay menu um, FN3 let's see what that does that auto quickly takes you into the sweeper mode okay so it's a quick way of getting in there FN4 that takes you into the service section that we showed you earlier okay menu FN5 that will um, start it um, doing a service search for you the limit search okay remember we did a limit search there we go pick something up okay that will do that straight away okay and let's go back to the main menu you don't have to click main menu each time you can just hit the FN key uh, like I did just then but um, uh, to make it easy I will go FN again and number six finally takes you in to the playback menu in other words what you've recorded and there you go that's what it picked up just a second ago okay and we'll show you all of this yeah this is this is all the recordings so it's a quick way of getting to your recordings okay so that's the FN key right what a long tutorial that was I hope um, you've um, stuck with it or at least gone through each little section at a time okay um finally what um i must obviously say thanks to uh, moonraker uh for um giving me the opportunity to be able to test the uh, whistler 1088 which is the one i am demonstrating today but don't be um but as we said at the beginning this tutorial with the menu is applicable for all of the different um radios they're just tiny little damn tweaks so certainly give moonraker a um a visit on their website and uh, they are the main um uk importer of the whistler scanners but it's not just whistler scanners you can get a hold of pretty much every type of um, radio equipment you could um wish for so click here please to visit them to visit airshow world click here <coughs> and to see all of my tutorials for the whistler scanners um click just up above here please subscribe and um, if you do select the option that says get notifications and you'll get an email when we put a new video out and around about 500 I can't believe it 500 uh, different videos at the moment and most of those are air show videos so you can sit down and you can watch um, as many air show videos as you want and um, we date way back right back to the 
19 mid 1980s i've got videos um far back as then and going right the way through up um to um the present day so um yeah you can have lots of fun of watching those spend all day <laughs> a long day okay listen it's been i know it's been a long tutorial and um thanks always you guys for um tuning in and uh watching what we do um every day we've got live feeds going out so also um look at some of my live streams as well and uh so much information out there that's on this channel thanks for watching and um we'll see you soon and leave a message thanks you take care